Welcome to Coaching Time with me, Benjamin Bailey, a professional coach, and this is how to understand downforce. So now we make the switch to, uh, to single-seater, and uh, single-seater we have the same as the GT with the, with the reference points, very important, uh, trail braking, it's also very important. Uh, one thing that is completely different uh, from the GT to the single-seater, or at least when you're going with, uh, with uh, over Formula 4, Formula 3, Formula 2, F1, uh, it's the downforce. So the downforce is something that's very difficult to, uh, to get used to, uh, because it's something you don't have much in the GT, you have very little in Formula 4 and, uh, and it's something that can trick your brain so it's very important to be uh, mentally ready and understand uh, the, the, the physics behind, behind the downforce. So basically uh, downforce, what it is, it's, it's the opposite as an airplane. So what makes the airplane goes up, uh, it's like you, you, you return a wing from an airplane and it put pressure the other way, so it stick the car to the ground. And like an airplane, the faster the airplane goes, the easier it is to take off. With the car, the fastest you go, the, easy, the more grip you have, and the easier it is to stick to the, to the ground. So one of the things that is, uh, that I often, uh, an example that I often have, is when I was driving in 2009, I used to, I did test, I was just winning the Formula 4, European Formula 4 championship, and I made a test in Formula 3, and the Formula 3 had massive amount of downforce compared to the Formula 4 I was used to drive. And there was this track in France called uh, Nogaro, uh, and there was a chicane. The last, the last two corners is, is a very, very fast chicane. And I used to tell my engineer that I had, uh, the car was, uh, was light, I was missing grip. Um, and he said to me, no, no, you know, it is, uh, this, is, uh, this is flat out. Don't worry, when you go flat, you will generate more downforce the car will grip more to the asphalt and the car will stop moving. And it was very difficult for me at that time to, uh, to understand that if I was going 20 kilometers faster into the corner, that the car would suddenly stop moving. Uh, because I, every time I lift it, I had this weight transfer to the front of the car and the car became all light. Uh, and once I understood that if I just hold my foot uh, down, I could do it flat, then every lap after that, that day were, were just an uh, easy flat. So here in Spa, for example, you have a perfect example in Eau Rouge. Eau Rouge, you have a very big compression in the bottom. And if you lift in the middle, the car will become light. But when you hold just flat, you can do it easy flat. Easy, because you generate more uh, downforce, the car gets sucked to the ground, and then it goes easy through, uh, through Eau Rouge flat. And like we talked about uh, this uh, onboard pole lap from Hamilton a couple of years ago in Spa, where he did the uh, Pouin, so the double left in Spa for Conchon, uh, completely flat. And that is exactly what, uh, what happened there. He hold it flat, generate a ton of downforce, and was able to do it, uh, to do it flat, where the other guys uh, had to lift. Now we're getting there, Pouin. Obviously with this car, you need to lift a little bit, but you know, you barely lift the throttle and you carry a lot of speed. Instead, with the GT, you had to brake, you had to be patient on the power application with this car. It's a piece of cake. So we've been talking about the perfect braking technique. And this is obviously what you should try to, to do more or less with, with every racing car. Um, small modification, depending on GT, single seater, but this is how you have to do it the right way. But, as I've been talking on the simulator, when you get to, to Formula cars, you have also the downforce. You have the downforce and then comes also with the GT, the weight transfer. So what I'm going to try to explain to you now, it's, it's uh, how to, how is the different braking technique depending on the cars and depending on the corners. So if we now try to illustrate a fast corner, 0% still on the brake, 100% on the throttle. Then what do you want to do in a fast corner? Like I explained my story the Formula 3, when I was lifting the throttle, the car felt light. And the car felt light, I have a little water bottle to illustrate. The car felt light because when I lift the throttle, the weight of the car was going to the front. 
So when you lift, the weight goes to the front. When you accelerate, the weight goes to the back. So by lifting, I was moving the weight to the front and then the rear become light. And after, when the engineer that had a lot more experience than I had at that time, told me, stay with the throttle flat. The weight was a little bit more to the back, not like this, because that is when you accelerate off the corner, but more or less like this. Then the car was much more stable through the corner and I was able to, to go flat. So how it looks, how does this look on the data? Obviously, I'm not going to explain to you how to stay flat because that you, you, you can all do. You stay on the throttle 100%. But something in between. You have a corner like Pouin, I, I showed on the simulator, the left corner, very fast left corner that Hamilton did flat out in Formula 1. How, in a, in a lower single-seater, Formula 3, GT, you can approach this corner? So, instead of having a very high peak then you will try to be much smoother to create less front transfer, so less weight transfer to the front, sorry. So you're going to try to have a braking that looks more like this, progressive braking, you can call it, where you brake a little bit more progressive, and then you have a smooth release. This may be a little bit too much pressure. We do a little bit smaller, more like this, and then like this. Boom. So instead of going to, let's say, 0 to 100, here you were going to 80%. Here you now you're going to go only to, let's say, 20%. The release of the power can also create weight transfer. So instead of releasing from 100 to 0 in a matter of 20 meters, you can also release in a longer distance. So now, here you were 20 meters, and here you're going to release in uh, 50 meters, let's say. That's also going to slow down the weight transfer. So, same as when you brake hard, when you lift hard, the weight goes to the front of the car. So here you try to combine two different techniques, progressive braking, less pressure, with a smooth release to, to all of that to create less front uh, weight transfer to the front. And then the car is going to stay more stable and you're going to be able to carry a lot more speed through the corner and you're going to gain a lot of time. And then you're gonna, it's going to feel a lot more comfortable as well to drive because instead of having the car light with the rear, suddenly the car is going to be a lot more stable. And then you're going to be able to push more. And then it's a question of trying to reduce that braking until you miss the corner, obviously. Try to push like we said on the sim push to the limit and break, release the throttle as late as possible. And it's a combination. And when the car feels light, then you know you have to come back a little bit, put a little bit less pressure. When the car starts to understeer and you start to miss, maybe you need to break a little bit more and start to release a little bit early. And the same strategy, trying to apply the with the power, trying to apply as early as possible, as fast as possible without uh, losing the rear on exit of the corner. This is how you lift the throttle and brake in a fast corner. Here on spa francorchamps there's two corners where the downforce is very, very important. And the first one is obviously Eau Rouge, Eau Rouge or Redion, how you want to call it. Uh, because with the Formula One car, it's pretty easy flat, thanks to the downforce. As long as you take the line more or less correct, you will be able to do it flat. And it's very important also uh, with, with this, your choice of simulator that, that you have a very good feeling uh, of the car, especially when you are at high speed. So you want, to have, you want to feel every change of direction from the car in the game. You want to feel the curb. If you have a little bit oversteer, a little bit understeer, you're not sitting in the, in the as long as you're not sitting in a simulator that, that moves. And today, I would say there's not really any moving simulator on the market that are, that are very good at simulating the oversteer and understeer. So you need to feel everything from the, from the steering, from the wheelbase. And uh, the direct drive, for me, it's the only choice uh, when it comes to sim racing. There's a lot of cheaper models where they are, have a belt drive or, or different, different models, different things, but, but the direct drive is a must uh, in sim racing and uh, I mean there's no doubt 
why and why Asetek is only doing direct drives because for them they're always looking at what's best for for, for, for the sim racer and and there's no point in spending time doing anything else. Now I'm using on this video the Forte. Uh, the, the the feedback is, is quite amazing. Uh, you have a uh, more than more than enough power. Uh, normally when I drive sim racing I like to drive more or less because when you spend hours in the sim, uh, you get tired maybe. So I like to drive between 12 and 14 newton meter, but this is my, my preference. Some would like to drive with more, some would like to drive with less, but m me, I'm setting about 12, 14 newton meter. But that allows me to drive for hours and hours. Um, and, uh, and also that allows me to feel enough uh, when I'm driving, I can feel the curb, I can feel the oversteer, I can feel the understeer, I can feel everything when I set it to that, uh, that force. So the way you can feel if you are understeering or oversteering without having the, the car moving under you, or feeling with your hip, now you need to feel everything through the steering wheel. So when you understeer, obviously you can see it with your eyes that you are going, uh, you're going straight, you're missing the apex perhaps, but the steering gets lighter. So here, if I turn, I can turn, 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 and the steering gets lighter. And that's because the front of, uh, the, front of the car is, is, is sliding. Oversteer is a little bit harder to, uh, to feel, but you will feel the steering getting a little bit heavier, so the other way as on the steer. And you will also see the, the car moving on screen. So now, for example, I will try to make it oversteer. Up, you see, up a little bit harder and then it gets harder at first and then lighter because the car lose control. And then the steer the other way, if I brake too late, I turn up, now the steering is super light. So you're losing the force. And with the, the Assetec SimSport, the Forte, the, the Invicta, or La Prima, you get very good feedback uh, and direct feedback. The importance is also the, how quick you get the, the feeling because everything is about speed. You know? So you want to get the feeling directly and, uh, and you want to react directly because you, if you react a fraction too late, then you spin or you miss the corner. And because of the quality of, uh, of the product, it allows you to react super fast and avoid the, the spin or the understeer. How to catch understeer, so let's go through that first. Like I showed before, when you, when you get understeer, it could be many different reasons. You, you brake too late, uh, you lock up, or you, you arrive with more speed. Uh, the understeer, so the steering will get, will get a little lighter. The worst thing you can do, it's just to put more, more input. So if you're already understeering with a certain angle, putting more angle in the steering, it's unlikely going to fix it. So what you need to do is, let's say, if you are on the power, if it's, uh, for example, there's difference with entry understeer, for example, here, or exit understeer. Now I get a little bit into, into details and uh, a little bit more complicated explanation, but let's start with the entry understeer. So now I get to La Source, I overshoot it understeer, and I just wait that the speed or keep a little bit of pressure on the brake just to slow down the car because the understeer is caused by the overspeed on entry. If it's an exit understeer, that could mean that you have applied the power too early, for example. So I have showed with the bottle how, the, how is the importance of the weight transfer. And it's the same here. When you brake, you put weight to the front and when you accelerate, you put weight to the rear. So if here I apply power too early, like now, I'm going to understeer on exit here, for example, you see. So the way to fix it is just release a little bit. If it's in the fast corner, you understeer on exit. Release a little bit the throttle, calm the car, and then when you feel the front uh, gripping again, you can apply 100% again. Here's a perfect corner for that. If I go in too fast, I start a bit on the steering, release a bit the power, and I get the front gripping again. Over here, I'm driving with an F1 car, a lot of, a lot of downforce, a lot of grip, so it's very, very fast movement with the steering. If you drive with a slower car, uh, you will have a little bit more time to correct. 
And uh, now to move on to, to oversteer. So if you catch some oversteer, uh, I mean the only, the only way to, uh, to fix oversteer is counter steering. So you have to try to counter steer, but not too much. You have to find the right balance as well. So uh, if, you get, if you go completely off the throttle and you counter steer too much, then the couch is going to go the other way. So the way to, you need to have that feeling, you need to be smooth with the pedal and smooth with the steering. Again, in F1 it's very, very fast, you can be a little bit more quick, but if you drive with a, with a GT or, or a slower car, you will have a little bit more time. So here I'm going to apply power a little bit too fast. Didn't manage to make it oversteer, but uh, like I say, it's all about smoothness and precision. If you are not smooth, then the car is just going to oversteer, understeer, it's going to move all over the place. And, uh, and, and the precision, it means don't do too much of it, you know. As a racing driver, I always prefer a little bit of, of oversteer, because uh, that means you have a very good front, uh, you can, you, and then you can put the car wherever you want on track. And you can always, like I said in the previous uh, video, uh, manage the, the, the oversteer with, with the way you release the brake. So I like to have a very good front uh, and, and then deal with, the, with the, deal with the oversteer. This is for me the, 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 the fast way. That's also you see Max Verstappen in, uh, in Formula One. He loves, I mean, he loves oversteer. You see him very, very quick with the steering. Uh, he likes when the car is very reactive. That's also why a lot of his teammates, uh, even at that level in Formula One, did not manage to drive the, the Red Bull car to the edge like he does, uh, because he has a level of, of, of feeling and, uh, and he's so fast in, in reacting to, to, to the oversteer uh, that he managed, he managed to be fast with the car and the other guys often crash or spin or, or, or drive 90% of, of the limit of the car because they are unable to manage it as he does. Because understeer, the problem with understeer is that if you catch some understeer, the only way to cure the understeer is to wait. And when you wait, you're not, you're not moving forward. So if you're not moving forward, you're not going fast. A little bit late, getting a bit of understeer, and then I just have to wait and then apply the power a little later. What you want also is as minimum, minimal time between the moment that you release the brake and the moment that you apply the power. So when you catch on the steer, that time in between is going to be greater. Uh, and like I just said before, if you have a time where there's no brake, no power and it's just waiting, then you are, you are losing lap times. So you want to brake and you want, as soon as you finish, apply the power. One small detail that I love about the Aztec product when I'm at home is the fact that you can just click the steering and get out of the sim. So if you have a sim where you are, for example, not, uh, you're a little bit tight, you cannot really get in, get out, then you can just take the steering off, put it on the shelf or put it somewhere, and then when you go, want to go back in, just get in and click and you're ready to go. That makes my day. <laughs>